Now, coming to Iowa provided another influence in his legacy. His uh, fortuitous, or maybe we should say destined, meeting with Helena here in Iowa City, arranged by their good friend, the Macanos. I think it's safe to say that Helena may have been the greatest influence in his legacy. As you know, Helena is a scholar in her own right, and she provided the lifelong companionship and intellectual stimulation that no doubt helped Dr. Ponsetti in many ways, not the least of which was her dogged determination in helping him persevere about clubfoot treatment despite the unfavorable climate of the orthopedic profession. I often comment that she's probably the second most knowledgeable person in clubfoot in the world, and if we could get her a medical degree, we could put her to work Monday, tomorrow. <laughs> so to Helena, today we say thank you for your role in the Ponsetti legacy. Throughout the 37 years we worked together, I keep, came to appreciate two particular influences which I think shaped his legacy. The first was that deep appreciation for the freedoms and opportunities afforded him by coming to America and specifically coming to Iowa City, this community and this university. And secondly, his deep sense of commitment, loyalty and concern for our department and its legacy. When you think about it, when Dr. Ponsetti began his career, there was no such thing as antibiotics. There were no vaccines. And polio, which was ortho what orthopedic surgeons cut their teeth on, if you will, that's what orthopedic surgeons treated, um, he lived through the era where basic discoveries changed mankind. And he developed this deep appreciation for the importance of medical research. And while he was a wonderful diagnostician and a terrific surgeon, this is not his legacy. His legacy is his humanity, his strong sense of medical ethics and their application to decisions we make in caring for patients, and his eternal quest for the fundamental understanding of disease which may lead to its elimination and no need for our services. Not a popular thought uh, for surgeons to encompass. And lastly is his tireless curiosity, which you've heard alluded to, which you saw every day until the very end, always the, asking the question, why? These are the attributes that have made our department one of the finest in the world, and it's the faculty le legacy that he has left to us and that we have an obligation to carry forward for those who will follow us in the future. We're all very fortunate that Dr. Ponsetti had a second career and came out of retirement in 1986 to tackle a problem which he had solved in 1950, clubfoot. Despite the fact that the pathoanatomy of the condition was well understood, the treatment method follow-ups had existed of 20 and 30 year follow-ups, documenting its success, surgeons totally dismissed the treatment saying it only works in Iowa. <laughs> I can't begin to tell you how frustrated he was. The feeling that you know something is better but nobody can see it, nobody understands. What a tremendous sense of frustration. Well, the rest of the story is known to you. The writing of his club foot book, Aided by Helen, its publication, Aided by Jody and Me, and the most potent change element, the internet, and the parent website started by one of my patient's mother, Mrs. Teresa McLaughlin, who's in the audience today, changed the world. From the method being only a footnote in orthopedic literature in most textbooks, the Ponsetti method is now the standard treatment of club foot around the world. You can't attend an international meeting anywhere without seeing papers on the Ponsetti method on the program, almost like it's something new. I think the most gratifying aspect of the method's adoption around the world is that the movement was led by parents who forced the disbelieving medical community to take a step back and examine the evidence when it comes to treatment of their child. What a gratifying sight I wish you all could see to see parents come to Iowa City from around the world with despair and anxiety thinking that this is their last chance not to have a crippled child. And to see the love and gratitude these parents have after the first cast is removed, and their almost disbelief at the end of treatment to see how normal the, their child's feet are. It's quite a sight to behold. And what a legacy this is, that hundreds of thousands of children around the world will have a normal life from an otherwise crippling condition, thanks to Dr. Ponsetti. And although they'll never personally know him, his legacy to them will have changed their lives forever. What a great gift. 
finally, on a personal note, of all the wonderful things that have happened to me in my professional life, none has been more meaningful to me than being named the Ignacio V. Ponsetti Chair. This wonderful honor, which was bestowed upon me 23 years ago, was a tremendous personal honor, but with that honor came a very heavy responsibility. When Jody and I began fundraising for this chair from alumni and friends in the department on Dr. Ponsetti's first retirement in 1984, the purpose of the chair was to be able to honor him in perpetuity through the actions and deeds of the chair holder. To me, this has been a sacred responsibility. Dr. Ponsetti always knew, and I tell you, that I mention his name everywhere I go and in every scientific presentation I present. I thank him publicly for all he's meant to my personal and professional life. Also, as I take care of patients here at University Hospital, I try to make certain that these patients and their families who seek our care get the best possible and most thoughtful care anywhere in the world, care that he would be proud of. The honor of having a chair in Dr. Punsetti's name to me means that he has been and always will be by my side in my thoughts, in my deeds, and in my professional life. So ladies and gentlemen, as we come here today to celebrate the wonderful life that we've all had together with Dr. Ponsetti, I hope you'll find comfort in these words. They are not dead who live in lives they leave behind. In those whom they have blessed, they live life again. Thank you. Thank you.